Hey, talking about conspiracies, where's Russ? Where's Russ been? This is the Ragged Edge Radio broadcast on a Thursday night. It is uh, getting right. It's, it's so warm around here. It uh, To me, it seems like it's spring. Uh, Ross has been, I have been uh, a little bit sick here lately, just the flu. Uh, the truth is, 14, 15 years, I haven't had a flu or a cold or anything, but the last number of years I've had one, you know, one, maybe two, um, one day, two day things. But last Thursday night, this thing hit me when I went out. We were doing some work, some of our SIIU, uh, engaging the conspiracy, the real stuff, the underground. And, um, Friday was off, and Saturday, I felt really good. A lot of people praying. We had a lot of things to do, a lot of things to confront, a lot of breakthroughs in dealing with cases. And so we were all out uh, Saturday everywhere. And then on uh, Sunday uh, morning, it comes back, of course, Monday through Wednesday. Part of the issue is uh, just the sound and uh, the throat and not being able to speak at all. So tonight, you're going to hear my voice probably a little bit obscure or skewed by the uh, whatever's left in my head. Feeling good, thanks to the prayers. What a tremendous friendship with uh, many thousands around that have prayed. I mean, I'm just, I'm amazed. I thank the Lord Jesus today for you and God's love for you and being behind this radio mic to say to you, to the rest of the world, to friends in well over 160 nations of the world now, that nobody loves you like God does. Nobody knows you like He knows you. And uh, there's no greater, um, there's no greater desire. Uh, no one has that greater desire for your life than God does. God wants you. Now that's uh, taking a look at the Lord Jesus and whatever your background. Go back to the gospel. Take a look. Look at His life. Look what He did. Look who He did it for. It's what the cross is all about. Now, there, um, there are some that would say the conspiracy around the cross, and there is, if conspiracy is defined, as we read it in different places, when certain people are plotting and planning evil things, there are those kangaroo corp, those behind the scenes conspiring, and even the dark side's involvement, you know, how do you put this into, um, you know, history? How do you put this into the facts of what are really, you know, that occurred? Satan enters Judas. Judas then moves, goes out, and betrays the Son of God. They come and get him, put him on the cross. But God, being infinite, runs circles around the deepest of satanic conspiracies, well, the death of Christ was planned. The resurrection of Christ was plotted and planned. Signed, sealed, and delivered. The Ragged Edge Radio uh, broadcast tonight and the next uh, four broadcasts will talk about the conspiracies. If you go to shatterthedarkness.net, that is the website behind all of it. And this is what it says, the X-Files, well, listen, the X-Files have returned. Years and years of the X-Files, Mulder and Scully and, well, the Cigarette Man. I mean, you could watch the X-Files and see super soldiers and mind control and chemtrails and aliens and abductions and hybrids and government conspiracy, alien conspiracy. We've titled this, this uh, for broadcast anyway, Re The X-Files Revisited or Revised. This new series that we're doing begins tonight, will go tomorrow night, and into next week a couple of times. Uh, the kind of subtitle, Dumbing Down the Conspirators. That is, when we take a look at all the conspiracies, some of the new things that are being put out there, some of the, uh, the disinformation that is put out there, well, there's no question that uh, the goal of um, those trying to seek the truth, those trying to expose what's really going on behind the scenes that brings harm to humanity. I mean, it could be by the government. It could be by business. It could be by, uh, well, just uh, criminals. But is there a dark side, a supra-natural side to all of this? So as we go into the series, tonight it's an overview. Tomorrow night, the top ten conspiracies, that's going to be hard because I'm going to give you a site, well, at least read off some of it. They have a hundred uh, the top 100 conspiracies, and uh, as I did the search, of course, there's uh, when it comes to conspiracy, the subject matter, it's well over 20 million uh, pages, and it, it's amazing. 
conspiracy is a big issue all around the world. And the question that some have asked, Russ, why are you doing this called the X-Files revisited or revised dumbing down the conspirators? Well, uh, we're going to talk about uh, four uh, or maybe even five of the reasons tonight. And I hope that that will make it clear on why we're even touching the subject when it comes to conspiracy. Let me do this. I'm going to go to, well, let me, I'm going to do something quickly here. I, I had somebody send me a Facebook and I appreciate this. This is really, this is really kind of creepy. Now I've had a friend from out in Texas send to me a picture of a doll they believe was possessed. A doll. I mean, think about Chucky. Think about uh, that, that singular doll at the end of the hallway and uh, those eyes. And is it, does it, did it breathe? Is it moving? Well, somebody else sent me, uh, again, dolls and spirits the other day. Now, this new friend sends me a BBC article. This is from the today, January 28th. It says this, the privileged world of Thailand's supernatural dolls. Now, as I look at this, here's what it says. It's a, cra- it's a craze for eerie, lifelike supernatural dolls has swept Thailand in recent months, their name is Lukthep, literally translate as child angels, and people believe they bring good fortune and that uh, they are they're pampered by the owners as if they're real children. But the privileged lavished upon them have become have uh, drawn a backlash and warnings from Thai authorities. Where's this come from? Listen, behind the dolls is blessings from the Buddhists. And normally you think in terms of Buddhist and peace and quietness. But, you know, I came from a Buddhist background. Listen, it's packed with spirits, supernaturalism, ascended masters, meditations to contact, voices in the head. Well, here's what it says. Quote, after purchasing a doll, the owner brings it to a monk who contacts or conducts a prayer, an anointing ceremony known as uh, Puksik. It is um, prayers to bless for lucky amulets, which are also popular in Thailand, by the way, where ancient beliefs in magic still are prevalent. Now, in the case of the Luke Thep, it is often seen a way of animating the doll where a wandering spirit is invited to inhabit it and give it a soul stop (laughs) that's exactly what they're trying to do exactly what the article says and we've talked about charged objects. You can, uh, you know, conjure a spirit, transfer a spirit, put a spirit onto a, to a rock, to an amulet, to a, to an idol, uh, to a, in, 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 into, into a temple, a necklace, a necklace, rings. Satanists know about power rings, demons on the rings. So now we have Thailand, and they're they're purposely seeking spirits to come and live, and invite them through a ritual. Um, process uh, to be inside the dolls. So do you have a charged object? Do you have an object that has a spirit that can begin to engage a human? Absolutely yes. Here in the United States, conspiracy? Well, Trump's not going to speak tonight at the Republican debate, which I think is, um, I actually think is kind of fantastic. It is something completely off the charts, and we're going to see all that's going to occur. But I mean, just story after story after story, it's like conspiracies. I mean, just imaginations from the head. Well, as we talk about the X Files, revisited or revised, dumbing down the conspirators. We're going to mention tonight again the overview. Tomorrow, the top 10. We're going to define um, on Monday night, we're going to bring a definition to conspiracy. We're going to talk about the mother of all conspiracies. If we define the conspiracy as it's basically defined, uh, then we're going to talk about the mother of all, which is supra-human and does bring affect and effect to every human being, every government, every corporation, every ounce of military. We're talking about conspiracy that brings, um, well, it, it, it ultimately, listen, it ultimately will bring extinction level events for humanity and the environment. And then we're going to go one further. God running circles around conspiracy and finding out that God's ways are beyond tracing out. 
uh, dealing with the infinite in comparison to the finite, uh, engaging that. Listen, if um, if you stand with God, that's a great thing because you're dealing with the one that knows it all. Omniscience, omnipresence, omnipotence in the context of... Um, well, the stuff that is uh, going on. We can call it stuff. It is conspiracy, and there is so much of it that it brings people to confusion and brings people to... Well, let's talk about some of the... Um, we're going to talk about some of those, but I'm going to put a little music behind that. Top 100 conspiracies. Adolf Hitler fakes the death. Mystery man signing of the Declaration of Independence. The Montauk Project. Barack Obama's citizenship, the Iraq War, the WMDs, civilization on Mars, birth certificate is a traded security, atmosphere on the moon, Count of St. Germain, the Majestic 12, John Titor, time traveler, Nero burns Rome, Watergate scandal, Bermuda Triangle, cell phones, Cold War was staged event, Mafia, Faces on Mars, Philadelphia experience, Experiment, United States as a Corporation, Treaty of 1213, America discovered before Columbus, Nazis backed by the Vatican, Francis Bacon was Shakespeare, Inside Earth is Hollow, President Eisenhower makes a treaty with the aliens. Martin Luther King assassination. Asteroid belt. Manhattan Project. Hitler burns down the Reichstag. The Great Seal of the United States. You know, with all those 13 everythings? The all seeing eye. Ancient text in the Vatican Library. Knights Templar. Planet Nibiru, Planet X, Aryan Master Race, Underground Tunnels and Bases, Hollywood's Influence, Harp Weather Manipulation, Vatican, and what is uh, a Dark Order, uh, Atlantis, Bigfoot, Denver Airport, Great Pyramid and the Sphinx, Skull and Bones, Civil War Started by Britain, AIDS created in a lab, the oil peak, feminism, income tax is not a law, Knights of Malta, Oklahoma City bombing, Project MK Ultra, Russian Revolution created by the American and Breton, eugenics, Abraham Lincoln assassination, environmentalism, depopulation, Bohemian Grove, Jesuits tied to the Illuminati, crop circles, Pearl Harbor was allowed to um, occur, FEMA camps, CI drug trafficking, chemtrails, Operation Paper. Clip, Diana murdered by British royal family. Operation Northwoods. Fluoride in the water. RFID. Flu shots vaccination. Man-made global warming. Big Pharma. NASA. Intelligence agencies. Three world wars planned in advance. Area 51. Loon Manning, well, the Loon Man landing was a fake. Roswell UFO crash. Bilderberg Group, mainstream media propaganda, deliberate dumbing down of education, Freemasonry, and um, alternative energy, Tesla suppression, shadow government, organized religion. Reptilians rule the world. John F. K. J. F. K. Assassination, alien abductions, Federal Reserve. Illuminati ruled the world. 9-11 was a false flag. Now, I, I'm, I'm looking at all of these, and I'm just saying, that's just scratching the surface of the numbers. I was reading at the website, Top 100 Conspiracies. And the truth is, there's truth to uh, many of them. There's uh, false flags. There's uh, rabbit chasing. I mean, if you want to go to find out whether Mickey Mouse uh, has a castle in the woods, that's up to you. I'm not going to spend my time on that. As we look at conspiracy, one of the reasons I'm doing this is that um, the end of days deals with the darkest of conspiracy and conspiracy upon conspiracy. And it's kind of like going through the layers of all of it. And does is there kind of a grand design? So tonight on the Ragged Edge Radio broadcast, part one, point one, hundreds of millions engaged. Now, you can ask the question, why in the world is Russ doing this thing called the X-Files 
And touching on, um, well, it's coming back, and millions upon millions will watch, and millions upon tens of millions have watched the nine, ten seasons that have been out there. And there are topics there. I mean, radio programs have been sta- uh, started, talk shows, uh, television shows, movies, series. Uh, people have been searching. T-shirts all over the place, right? By the way, just a quick note personally, thank you for the prayers. During this little flu, head cold thing, whatever it was, I knew, you know, you're going to get over it. Just aggravating because it puts me behind. And we have trips to go on, SIIU engagement. We uh, have engaged, after many years of prayer, what I believe is an underground, all the way back to the 50s, maybe to the 40s, Nazi cult, um, the origins of the Black Flame and uh, where a lot of the SRA stuff comes from. So um, we're involved in the issue of um, exposing uh, the underground and knowing that there is a a clear uh, underground and and there's many parts to it and there's a supernatural power into it. Uh, I mean, listen, a lot of the the, the conspiracies and so-called conspiracies, you can take a look at all of them and and realize that um, there are some not worth uh, worrying about, uh, checking out, looking at. But there are those that may involve your health, involve your money, involve your life, involve your nation, involve your eternity. And that's vital to talk about. So the question, Russ, why are you going to do this thing on the X-Files, revisited, revised, and dumbing down the conspirators? Well, here are the reasons, actually. Number one, hundreds of millions are engaged, whether the books, the talk shows, the movies, the research, the investigations. uh, Oak Island, I was watching the other day, more of the Nazi. I was watching, and I sent around a a number of friends, um, a new video I haven't seen before, but out there. Uh, Vril, the Vril Society, that I think has impact this very day. The powers behind Hitler, Himmler. You know, I, I mean, in, in tracking some of this down, I've, I've gone clear to the Himmler Castle, the Hall of the Dead, uh, down in the down in the crypt, as they call it. And and so there's an interest here, but my interest involves um, a centrality. Uh, that there is, uh, there's an answer in all of this. There's a reason for all of this. I mean, is that is that what mankind is? Just a, um, you know, bunch of uh, fallen, broken, hurting, lying, cheating, stealing. And I hear people saying, yes, 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 right now because mankind. And we look at men. I mean, we look at this right now. In our city here, there's people that have blown each other away on the streets. Uh, the Akron uh, in Akron, Ohio. There's um, uh, mentioned by one of the uh, police uh, officials that if you're going to get robbed on the street, just let the person take everything. Don't fight them, because the last couple of people that tried to fight the robbers, uh, which were around 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds, um, they shot the uh, victims. So instead of losing your life, just give up your tennis shoes, give up your money, give up your credit card, give up whatever else, and uh, payday another day, they say. The kind of world that we live in involves conspiracy. If conspiracy involves a few people getting together, conspiring together to plot and to plan and to do something evil, it has that evil connotation. I mean, I plot and plan with people to do good. We plot and plan in evangelism. We plot and plan in, in reaching out to victims. We really do. And that's a good thing, asking for God's strategy, asking for God's leading, and trusting that God's opening doors, and he's been doing that left and right, and we've seen some astounding things. And part of that is uh, what's happening right now. You're listening to a voice of a person that, that, that knows God, that loves God, that loves Christ, and, and, and knows the courage is that not only is God real, uh, he is knowable, that he loves you, there is truth. Well, we'll talk about the truth issue here in just a moment. One of the reasons, one of the reasons to touch on this as a believer in Christ, is that hundreds of millions are engaged in um, in the research. Just take one thing, one thing alone. Uh, back in the nineteen nineties, a, a a monarch project, uh, Ford Bragg Psy Warrior, comes into my office. Now listen, I spent years as an individual, and uh, they're probably listening tonight. And uh, they know that I still pray for them, but they hide from me. 
But they brought in to me one night, uh, they just took out some, uh, they wanted sheets of paper, and they brought in uh, a, a necklace with an owl and and uh, and a couple other things, and they, they drew out all these pictures of a place called Bohemian Grove. I'd never heard of it back in the mid-90s, and they talked about being there and what they do there, and the rituals, sexual abuse, uh, the mind-controlled monarchs that are there, and the rest of the stuff that goes on. So um, looking into a little bit of it, then someone walks into my office a few years later, gives me the video of, um, of Alex Jones going in, and then more videos come out, more pictures come out, more research comes out, more digging into all of it, and yes... Uh, Bohemian. I, I made a website. It's old. It's it's it's. We still have it, but we and that's where the terms Project Josiah came from, because in looking at Bohemian Grove, it's a high place. It's a place of human sacrifice. It's a place where there are conspirators, and they're bringing in those who are witting and unwitting from the kings of the earth. And a ritual is done, not cremation of care, not drama. This is not your friendly neighborhood uh, child's drama or play. We're talking about a real ritual in the order of the ancient ones that go back to Sumer with a deity, a demon deity named Semiramis. Power is invoked. Demons are uh, summoned. And the reasons, nobody's supposed to know this. The reasons, uh, I was screamed at in Connecticut by a underground, uh, one of the undergrounders. They stood up at the conference and said that I must have my head cut off. That I, um, they, that I must die. That the uh, old ones, uh, that, I, that I, I let out the secret. That the ri- reason for the ritual, some of the demons uh, conjured them through the ritual. And then target the audience Send the demons on the audience to influence them for a dark globalism. Now, you might think that's strange, but if you understand left-hand path, if you understand that at all, you know that the ritual done there is not a drama, not a play, not sympathetic magic, but the real thing. On U.S. soil, a massive high place where they claim it's a mock human sacrifice, but it's not, it's real. And what is not what is not broken open is the fact of how uh, the powers are summoned. And again, the kings of the earth, the world leaders, the presidents and senators, media mogul, military, they're all there by design. And nobody has answered the question, who really are those in power that have such clout that are able to bring the world leaders to a place in the woods in California by the Russian River? Do what they do, drugs, alcohol, homosexuality, every kind of decadent sexuality, the monarchs, mind control, subpersonalities, all of that is connected. Old German Nazism is connected. The ancient black flame is connected. It's part of a larger. Bohemian Grove is part of a larger, a much larger global real conspiracy. But just in terms of, you know, Bohemian Grove, that's why we have asked thousands, we're going to renew that call, for thousands to pray that God will just, I don't care if it's an earthquake, I don't care what it takes, a shaking of the land to bring exposure to the perpetrators, to bring destruction to the dark powers, to bring a rescue, a supernatural rescue to the victims, and a healing and a saving and a helping and a delivering by the Lord Jesus for those victims, that's the only way it's going to happen. Because as uh, investigators have looked and researchers have looked, if you do not understand dark side supernaturalism, you will not scratch the surface or budge its gates an inch. Hundreds of millions are engaged They're engaged as being a part of, they're engaged being affected by, they're engaged in studying, they're engaged in, you know, knowing some things about it. I mean, there's fake conspiracy junk. There's literally loony stuff out there. There's no question about that. The last thing I want to do is hunt down manufactured conspiracies. There's too much of the real to deal with. Like in Ezekiel chapter 8 in the Bible, that was the real. There was real conspiracy. It was really there. It was supernatural. It was hidden. It, there, was, there was those behind the scenes that were doing it all. And God and God alone knew and knew it clearly and led the great prophet to find it. 
to expose it, uh, to uh, bring insight, to put it in the scriptures for us to see. Listen, there is a real dark side underground. There really is a mother of all conspiracy operative in the world today. I mean, that's what we're going to talk about here in a second. When we talk about behind the conspiracy and behind that conspiracy and behind that layer and that layer and that like conspiracies are like an onion taking layer upon layer upon layer going down to the center and the center darker the closer you get to the core the mother the cause hell's kitchen the darker and more powerful and more reactive it will become i really believe that so who's done what about the Kim Trails? What about MK, MK Ultra? What about LSD? What about? I mean, we could talk about a lot of these. Uh, hun, a hundred of the top we'll try to touch on in four or five days. Let me read you what the Spirit of God said through the prophet Isaiah. Seven, well, 2,700 years ago. Quote, Do not call conspiracy everything this people calls conspiracy. Do not fear what they fear, and do not dread it. Isaiah chapter 8. Look at it in context. Um, this is vital for believers worldwide when we understand the plan of God, when we understand the, the, the infallible, irrevocable, irreversible victory and um, the real outcome. Not just random chaos, not just possi- a thousand possibilities, but a real clear ultimate plan that supersedes uh, the plurality of con- conspiracies and the, the, the mother of all, as we'll talk about it. So one of the reasons, hundreds of millions of people engaged, hundreds of millions of people affected, billions will be affected. Well, they're affected right now. They have no idea there is a supernatural uh, conspiring to suck the world in. Revelation 12. See, I've been, I've been mentioning that again and again. In one of the most um, descriptive um, chapters in Scripture concerning the entity, the fallen cherub, not only is it a great description of his being, but a description of his ultimate end to lead the whole world astray. Every government, every economic system, every military, military system, uh, the universe, I mean, on a global scale. Now, we'll get to it next Tuesday night in bringing uh, a definitive look at the mother of all conspiracies. And that's part of the reason. Because I know there really is a dark side, twisted, confusing, supernaturally empowered deception, masquerading. And uh, that that's an outrage uh, because that's what that side uses. I mean, this could be a plot of uh, four or five individuals just stealing money on the streets. This could be a plot of those who are terrorists that are going to um, blow up uh, you know, a local um, building somewhere, a uh, school somewhere. I mean, there's conspiracy behind the terrorists, conspiracy behind the 9-11 issue, conspiracy behind uh, even the elections right now, right? Is there, in the context of all of it, can you weed through it? You know, the pictures, right? The truth is out there. Every time I see have seen that picture on television or on videos, and I've been, listen, while I've been kind of off the last number of days, I've probably watched about 10 or 15, I don't even know how many now, just reruns, sitting back, blowing my nose, drinking some tea, and kicking back a little bit, uh, watching reruns of the X-Files and seeing the topics, and seeing how they've scratched the surface of some of the real stuff. Wondering where they got their information. You know, when I watched uh, the movie uh, Conspiracy Theory, Conspiracy Theory had into it some of the real factors of Monarch and MK Ultra and the projects. No question about that at all. When I watched the Manchurian Kennedy, the newer one with um, Denzel Washington, no question that somebody knew something. Somebody had the some of the factual screen memory, the way to implant. Somebody had some insight in the creation of Manchurian candidates, program shooters, assassins. So there are those that, um, you know, we, we look at some of this and we scour the books and we scour and, and deal with, um, you know, a lot of information. 
But again, reading through. Using truth, infallible truth, Francis Schaeffer, the great theologian philosopher, I loved his writings. There's times I reread his writings. If you're kind of bent on the intellectual side, I encourage you to get the writings of Francis Schaeffer that was at Libri, Switzerland. The God who was there, the God who was there and not silent, escaped from reason. He wrote on metaphysics, uh, epistemology from the biblical perspectives. And, and uh, he, he talks, he defines biblical truth as true truth. I love it when Jesus says, verily, verily, I say unto you, or literally, truly, truly. Or he's, he's making a point saying, I'm telling you the truth. So again, the reasons why to do the series, the reason, reasons why to engage this, not only the hundreds of millions, but number two, the conspiracies, um, so many of them, they really are there. And they really affect. Now, the types, the kinds that are in government. Uh, was there a conspiracy behind the shooting of JFK to cover up? Yes. Um, you think in terms of the government conspiracies, begin to list them. Business conspiracies, begin to list them. The mafia, and consider it. Uh, you know, you think in terms of the terrorism and the conspiring that goes on. Think in terms of the military and the conspiring. What about the occult? The world of the occult, Masons, 56,000 temples in the United States alone and around the world. The Rosicrucians, the Illuminati, the OTO, and uh, the Viril Society, many others. And then there's the alien. Listen, tens of millions upon millions worldwide are engaged in the alien ufology subjects. Some embracing it with every ounce of their being. Some embracing it that the master race of uh, of creators are coming. Are they? Better read Revelation chapter 9 if you're wanting disclosure. Revelation chapter 9 if you're seeking disclosure. Revelation chapter 9 if you're using occult means and new age spiritual means to open gateways to Orions and to Pleiadians and to others. If you're trying to open the door, if they're trying to get you to open the doors, you better take a read of Revelation chapter 9. You're not going to like the disclosure that's coming. So the conspiracies, they are here. There's no question. Look at the drug trade. There's conspiring behind that. Look at, um, look at the, the sex trade industry. Look at satanic ritual abuse. That is, a again, a supernatural thing covering. Um, and again, not many major researchers and trackers of this. I mean, there's many that are growing up and becoming the helper helpers and bringing salvation and healing and help and protection. I'm glad for that today. Nowhere near enough. But I want you to hear that I believe four generations that that goes back to the Viril Society, goes back to the master race that is a continuation, that is a biblical concept that goes all the way to Armageddon. Are there, in my estimation, 100 million that have been spiritually selected bred to be raised in and become chosen ones, troops of antichrists from the ages of seven, 68 all the way down to 4 and 5 and 6, new ones, the fourth generation. Is there a conspiracy? You better believe it. That's what the book The Black Awakening is all about, uh, subtitled The Rise of the Satanic Super Soldier. It has everything to do with prophecy. By the way, prophecy, again, uh, this is a vital aspect I'll give to you. It talks about the study of prophecy and that we need to um, really engage it because it is like a light shining in a dark place. That brings me to point number three tonight. Is the truth out there? I mean, when we think in terms of the truth and we see the poster and even on my slide if you go to shatter the darkness.net we got a little uh, uh screen uh, just a thought provoking the truth is out there and i guess that's supposed to be a picture of Mulder and scully i'm not sure the truth is out there I'm reading a news story and it was sent to me just before getting on air nasa hacker chief explains how to keep him out of your system Wired Magazine gives us a, a little peek into, quote, it was uh, the talk most anticipated at this year's inaugural um, 
uh, Unix Enigma Security Conference in San Francisco. And you have Rob Joyce, the nation's hacker-in-chief, took up the ironic task of telling a room full of computer security professionals and academics how to keep people like him and his elite corps, corps out, uh, teams out of their systems. Think in terms of that. Uh, NASA in your computer, NASA in your phones, uh, the NSA, uh, listening here and there. Uh, is there a connection between the two? Why is there so much occult symbology? Symbolism in, in NASA, let alone the super secrecy and yet occult embrace when it comes to the NSA. Do they have intuitives there that engage through machinery that's been created to um, talk to non human entities like the Nazis did? Well, there's a guy that wrote a book concerning that in, in, in the NSA, and he says so. Now, th this again comes down to conspiracy. You can go check, check uh, Project Preserve Destiny. Dan Sherman claims to be uh, an intuitive, was connected to machines at the NSA, in which he had to become completely passive, as they do in the occult, as they do in New Age concept, in meditation. Go passive, uh, open your whole system to the entities that will come and begin to communicate. The truth is out there, the poster says. The truth is out there is part of the theme of the X-Files over and over and over and over and again. And again, Moeller's out there searching for it and, and, and others are searching for it and they're looking for the truth behind government conspiracy and the cigar man and, and alien abductions and high bread and super soldiers and all the rest. And I think I think in many of the cases, I mean, the truth is, the truth really is out there when it comes to uh, many of those subjects. Tracking it down to the source, but when that um, when when the when the conspirators are conspiring and they're doing things that are illegal and criminal and wrong and harmful and everything else and based on greed and manipulation, well, of course they've got to obscure everything. Of course they got to either do it in, in in total secrecy or layer upon layer upon layer of disinformation and distraction. Now, what I'm going to be able to do tomorrow night also is tell you um, the Greek word halathia. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, gnosko. That is, you shall come to know the truth experientially. Context, it has nothing to do with the CIA. It has everything to do with the biblical revelation of God in Christ. Everything to do with reality. Everything to do with knowing God. Everything to know, do with uh, knowing your destiny. Everything to know, you know, everything to have, you know, have a standard, a grid for truth. Having someone you can back up into that is far beyond the conspiracies. Listen, for all the conspirators out there, for all of those that uh, recon the show, for those that understand conspiracies, think in terms of Psalm 139 and the omniscience and omnipresence of God in knowing what he knows. Does God know about what you do? Does God know about Area 51? Does God know about Bohemian Grove? Does God know about uh, terrorism in the Middle East? Does God know about uh, the Bilderbergers? Does God know about the trilateralists? Does God know about the, uh, the uh, Club of Rome and now the Club of Budapest? Does God know about the... So does God know about this? We'll talk about that tomorrow night when it comes to truth. Uh, but I want to say this tonight. The biblical concept of truth, halathia, means it has the idea of absolute truth, true truth, infallible truth, inerrant truth, but truth that is um, is rooted in a person. All of the scripture comes from a person. All of the scripture comes from the source of a of a personal being that is communicating. All the writers of scripture, of course, are understood to have been influenced, guided, directed. The Bible says they were carried along by the Spirit of God. And uh, the guidance of the Spirit of God, that is the person, God guided them. Simply say this, the Bible uh, is alive, it is supra natural. Uh, I don't think you're going to understand it from the physics of man in that sense. You've got to understand the physics of God. That is the abilities, the works, uh, the process. How does God and his presence live in the words? And by the hearing of the words, 
break open truth and break open his presence to your very life. That truth once believed then brings the, the kind of the doorway in a sense, the way in which we receive the living God, the living presence of God into our lives. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The Bible talks about faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. The Bible is said to be the word of truth, the spirit of God in which he's at work right now, even as you listen. He's called the spirit of truth. Dwelling in the believer forever, guiding us and leading us. You see, if you're on this side of the fence in the sense that you've, you've received Christ and he lives in you, the spirit of God lives in you. You know what that means? The spirit of truth. The God that knows omniscient, omnipresence. I mean, does not the scripture say the deep things uh, you know, come from God? I mean, the spirit of God knows the deep things of God. You have to be infinite to know God exhaustively, and God the Holy Spirit is. And he dwells in the believer, and the Spirit of God is in the world, and he's, um, he's in the world to convince and convict the world of three things. Sin, righteousness, and judgment. Sin that we still have in our lives and are caught by and are captive by and lost in and, and uh, that brings the wages, the wages of sin, death, the issue of righteousness. I mean, think about it right now as you're lying there, earbuds in your ears. As you're listening there uh, in the house, cup of tea, cup of coffee. In the shop, the dear owner of a shop in Pennsylvania that says he puts our stuff on all day long. In the metal shop work down in Ashland, in my friend that is in Spain, the artist, they listen. See, as I sit behind uh, this mic, I speak about the person of truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Those three things, truth and life and the way, the way. I mean, if you look at that and break that down, I am the way. Now, the context is he becomes the doorway. He is the door to God. He is the Savior of the world. Through him, you come to know God. That's clarity. That's assurance. No conspiracy behind this. God's not created a conspiracy. He's come to break the dark conspiracies and bring truth. That this truth, uh, like, a, uh, like, a, like a, a massive, huge sledgehammer striking the pebbles of conspiracy, and laying down the truth that God is real, that God loves you, God has a plan for your life, God has eternity to give to you, that God sends Christ into the world, that there was a death, there was a resurrection, he's coming again. And all that God says about the dark side's conspiracy to keep you blind. Now stop for a moment. Some of you have never read 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Let me be honest, I think there are some that are so arrogant they would not even want to open the Bible and read that. Some in the dark side, they, they want, they're not going to read that. An opposition to truth, an opposition to light. I'm talking about biblical truth, the infallible, the kind that's linked and comes from the heart, the being, the mouth of God. Jesus has come, in God has come in human flesh in the, in, 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 in the person of Christ and he's the living embodiment of truth. He is the way back home to God. He is the, um, the way, the truth, and the life, the zoe, the life that comes from heaven, the qualitative life, the eternal life. No one comes to the Father but through me, Jesus said. God has given a clear and absolute way uh, that, he's, that, he's, that, he's, that he's brought for the sum total of humanity. Timothy chapter 2, this is good and pleases God our Savior, who wills all, pass on through pass, all humanity, to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. You've got to hear the truth. You've got to repent. You've got to believe. The Spirit of God is there to convince and convict you with the Word of God that you're lost, that you've got sin, that you have no way. Have you found God on your own? I have not. Do you have a righteousness that's able to stand before God and say, I have a right to be in heaven? 
take a look at your life for, for real. I mean, let's take a look for real. And what about judgment? See, you are in the predicament because you sinned and uh, the wages of sin is death and hell has its rights and Satan has its rights over you. How, how are you going to change that? How are you going to fix that? See, God came to fix that based on, well, take a look at John 3.16. When you talk about the omniscient, in, in, in well, you, you apply a lot of things to the attributes of God, infallible, inerrant, God, uh, immeasurable, uh, God, infinite. I mean, we're talking about God and his um, desire for your life. That's why I say that on the radio all the time. God so loved the world, John 3, 16. Theos. It begins with gar, the word meaning, it's almost like a shock to the writer. Think of this, for God so loved the world. That's you. Even if you've been spitting in the face of God, even if you've been the hedonist living in your sin, even if you're the ISIS Muslim conspiring bloodshed and you're lost and you know it and you have no hope and you're going to hell Christ died for you in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for you you ever read the book of Romans chapter 5 so the truth not only is out there it's here the truth has come to us God is the embodiment of truth. God has spoken. God has spoken through prophets. Angels have been involved. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of truth has given guidance. The Bible becomes this, this word of truth, the grid by which every believer lives and breathes and grows and knows God and gains discernment. And from that grid of Scripture, that revelation, your eyes are opened up to see what the rest of the fallen world cannot see. I mentioned 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Have you looked that up? The God of this age, small g, small g, Luciferians, meaning finite and fallen and uh, can't even bring about... He, can't, he, has, he doesn't have the physics to make himself infinite so finite being fallen broken hating god we'll talk about uh, the source of the mother of all conspiracies i think on tuesday but he uh, the god of, an entity is behind this the God of this age blinds the minds of unbelievers. That is, those who don't believe in God, in Christ, those who don't know him, those who don't have the Spirit of God inside. If you do not have the Spirit of God inside of you, I don't care. Listen, if you've got Anglican background, Catholic background, you know, if it, and, and you've sat back before and said it's all unreal. There's, you don't feel connected to God. God feels way outside on the other side of the universe. That's how I was. That's why I searched for everything. That's why I got into the occult, New Age concepts and spirituality and, and Buddhism before I ever came to Christ. Because I never heard how you can come to God through, through Christ until 1975. When I heard the truth about how to come to God through Christ and receive Him into my life, well, I came out of that darkness. I came out of the clutches of the one that was blinding my mind so that I couldn't see so if you can understand first or second Corinthians 4 4 there is a supernatural entity the fallen cherub and his collective globally the God of this eon this time period this age in which we're living this fallen world uh, he he blinds there is a operating principle in which well the word has the idea of blowing smoke through the perceptions, uh, through the, the totality of your mind, where your perceptions, your discernment, your ability to understand is all clouded to the point you can't see. The goal for Satan is so you cannot see the light of the glory of the gospel of Christ, who is the icon, is the Greek word, the exact representation, the visible appearance of, of God on earth, of the invisible God. Do you know him? He's come for you. 
The truth is he's come for you. The truth is he wants you. The truth is he loves you. The truth is he has power to come into your life and uh, put his presence in his work, the work of Christ, down into, well, not just to your DNA, past that. Deposit into you the, uh, the, uh, the gift of eternal life, the immortality that is to come. And the good news is in all of this that uh, he opens us up to truth. And then by that truth, we can see the lies. And by that truth, our eyes are open. By that truth, uh, we are awakened. It is by Christ, by the Spirit of God, by the Word of truth, we are awakened. Truth is a person, Christ. It involves a relationship. It involves an awakening to the truth of Jesus, of God, of the Spirit of God coming to dwell in you. Now listen, you can read Romans, listen, whatever your religious background, you can read Romans chapter 8. If you have not the Spirit of God, you are none of His. And until you open the door, Christ comes to knock at the door of your life. The Spirit of God comes to speak to you, and He tells you, you're the lost one, you're the sinner, you've got death in you, hell has its rights, and Satan owns you. Come to Christ. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, come into my life. I repent, I turn from all sin and darkness, and I renounce all of the false trinket spirituality that I've been involved in. I come to you, Christ. I receive you as God, as Savior, as Lord. I accept you, and I accept your word as truth. I accept your gift of salvation. Let me know if you do that. With the six or seven minutes we have tonight to tell you about the most important thing that could ever happen in your life. The truth not only is out there. See, when I was lost, I knew that God was out there. It wasn't that I didn't believe that he wasn't out there. I didn't know how to get to him. When you read the Gospel of John, you're going to read clearly how to get to him. John's Gospel, chapter 7. That whoever believes in Christ, as the Scripture has declared, out of their inmost being would come the working of the Holy Spirit welling up to eternal life. He will come into your life. He will step into your life. Many of you understand spirits. Some of you have spirit guides that you need to renounce that are masqueraded demons that will keep you from God. Well, they'll try to convince you that you are God, really. Create a planet. Sustain a planet. Let alone hundreds of millions of them in thousands upon thousands of galaxies. You're not God. God is God, and he loves you, and he's come in the person of Christ. Listen, if you need to seek and uh, think about it, go to, go to the Gospel of John to where God can interact with you as you read the Gospel of John. But you'll have to turn to him. You'll have to receive him. You'll have to open up your life. You'll have to call upon him to come in. Now, he's going to be knocking down uh, the doors of your heart. God desires and wills to come into you with all his presence and power, his gifts, his promises. With the time we have left tonight, point four, one of the reasons I'm doing the whole thing on conspiracy is the truth. Not only is out there, it can be known. God can be known. God wants to be known. God has come to make himself known. God has come to give us truth. In the midst of the um, unprecedented darkness, unprecedented conspiracies, the mother of all that we'll talk about Tuesday, in the context of the presence of the dark side Operative in the world to bring confusion, conspiracy, blindness to perception and minds and understanding. The goal to keep you from God, keep you collected, keep you part of the um, fallen system. Is that what you want? There is a way out. There is a way out. And God calls the sum total of humanity. Point four tonight, one of the other reasons I'm doing the series. Behind the conspiracies, now again, we can talk about Bohemian Grove, we can talk about Skull and Bones. When I was up at Yale, my friend and I had got around the building up there at Yale, and, and we had been, we'd got uh, special passes to go into the library and to engage the Seth writings and the guardian of the Seth writings, the demonic writings, um, that that's a whole other story, and uh, we 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 went there to share the gospel. 
But while in Yale, in all of our search in those two days, the side door opened up to the Skull and Bones building. I tried to push my friend in. <laughs> of course, he laughed. He didn't go all the way in. It was the kitchen. And though the door opened, there was nobody there. It was kind of creepy because there was nobody there. We're going again. See, Skull, it's not the only secret society at Yale or Princeton or Harvard, by the way. A lot of secret societies, organized, connected secret societies, and then it just layers down step by step by step like an onion. The closer to the center, the darker, the more powerful, and pretty soon you realize... There are beings that are running all of this that hate God with a passion. You know, they hate God with the totality of their beings. They discard man and would and would annihilate humanity if not for God and if not for the fact they wanted to use humanity. See, that side and that conspiracy has everything to do with Armageddon, everything to do with the collapse of the nations. Everything to do with the conspiracies. Behind one is another. Behind that one is another. Are the Bilderbergers the final ones? No. Bohemian Grove, what's behind that? Who's connected? Who are the people? Where do they go? How do you track them down? Ezekiel chapter 8. You're going to realize that behind the conspiracy, the real ones uh, are more connected, more connected. Then you see the, 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 the design, the dark design behind all of it. A mind that is greater than man, satanic, demonic, but not greater than God. So, it involves your destiny, it involves the quality of your life, it involves your children, it involves your grandchildren, it involves everything. If we are, and I believe we are, and most prophecy teachers believe we are, the last of the last days, and the prophecy is what God calls it, a light shining in a dark place, um, exposing and unveiling the satanic dark side conspiracy, and then unveiling uh, God's incredible, um, well, victory, the assured victories. You know, the dark side has a grand design, a dark one. Brought down one-third of the angels, brought down the human race, um, going to guide humanity to Armageddon. You ever read Revelation 19.19? Take a read. That's the, uh, that's the ultimate end. I know I've heard a lot of others write about the, the, uh, the end game. But the end game is Revelation 19.19, for the dark side anyway. It's uh, the end of what, I mean, as far as their, their absolute goal, but also the end of them. Uh, their peak also um, is the, the announcement of their um, utter and eternal destruction. Ragged Edge Radio broadcast Monday through Friday. This is Russ Dizda. The website behind all of this, shatterthedarkness.net. Now we have prophecy prepared and we have the siucrimes.com. We have the theology for the third millennium, the biblical studies, the courses. I was looking again at the courses and the archives and the MP3s. I think we're at about 20 million downloads in 160 countries of the world. I need your prayers. I need you to pray for us. We have a lot of being out of the country soon and in other states. And we have um, numerous individuals we want to minister to and deal with. Good news is we see people get saved and delivered and healed. We're seeing some great things occur. The team that I have is one of the most astounding group of individuals. And as they allow me, I'm going to put their, <laughs> as they allow me, I might put their pictures out on our sites. But they travel and they go and they sacrifice because they believe that God loves human beings and that God has power and that Jesus saves and heals and delivers. So remember us in your prayers. And as we begin once again this year to, uh, and we're going to give you all the um, design behind the websites to recruit, because I believe we can. 10 million fearless, powerful prayer warriors and soul winners around the world. We love you tonight. Remember us in your prayers. For those that can, remember us in your support. And uh, for those who really can, remember us in investment. Take a look at their website, 
See the t- support tab. That's all we're going to say about that. Love you tonight. Good night.